OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Uh, welcome to Grab and Go Lessons for Digital Learning, presented by OTAN Subject Matter Experts, uh, more affectionately known as OTAN SMEs. Um, we have our whole team presenting today. My name is Susan Coulter, and I have worked 33 years in adult education. Uh, my focus today is on ASC subjects, or in other words, high school equivalency and high school diploma. And Yesenia. Hi, everyone. My name is Yesenia Delgado, and I am the CTE specialist, um, also a subject matter expert for OTAN. Alicia. Um, yes, I'm Alicia. I am um, the Adults with Disabilities person. <laughs> and Susan. Hi, my name is Susan Gare, and I'm ESL, and I've started teaching in 1978, so I don't even know how many years that is, but it was always adult education for me. Debbie. Hi, everyone. I'm Debbie Jensen, and I've worked in ABE a whole lot, and that's what my focus is here today. Christy. Hi, everyone. My name is Christy Reyes. I'm an ESL faculty member um, in a non-credit program in San Diego County and an, uh, been an OTAN subject matter for a number of years now. Welcome, everyone. I love this graphic. It shows many faces of OTAN and all that OTAN offers you. And starting from the upper right um, corner is news and social media. OTAN regularly posts news articles on their homepage and on social media. You can follow us on Twitter, now known as X, and LinkedIn, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, next is the annual Technology and Distance Learning Symposium, uh, which happens the beginning of March. And this year it is in Fremont, California, but it rotates every year between Northern and Southern California. The two-day conference is only $40. Um, and next, we're going around in a clockwise direction here, um, is the online resources and video presentations. And be sure to check out OTAN's video presentations. There are also numerous curriculum offers and online resources. And then moving clockwise, we have the monthly OTAN digests and quarterly newsletters. And coming back up is Teaching with Technology. Um, teaching with Technology is an online database of lessons, of uh, lesson plans, which you will learn more about today. And last is Professional Development, which you already know about. But did you know that you can have OTAN come to your school and do a training for free? You just need 10 people. And that is OTAN in a nutshell. I'm going to turn it over to Debbie Jensen for a brief history on the teaching of technology database. Hi, I'm excited to share with you the history of what we're going to be looking at today. Teaching with technology started with you. Um, teachers would want to share how they used technology in their lessons. And so we got lots and lots and lots of resources, but of course, at some point, we had a really hard time searching them and using filters. And so around 2010, uh, we decided that we were going to organize them using the TPAC model. And TPAC stands for Technological Pedagogical Content and Knowledge. And that's how we did it for years. Um, then in around 2018, we were looking and realizing that we needed to address accessibility at the website and with each of our entries. And so because we were going to have to redo everything anyway, we thought, well, what else can we do? Let's, what else can we add that's going to make this even better? So we added lesson plans. We added the Triple E framework, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. We added licensing, uh, Creative Commons, and the new updated standards so that the materials that you get to use reflect the latest and the best. Our agenda today. Well, I, first we're gonna have a little um, get to know you 
activity. But then we're going to go into Triple E framework, which is engage, enhance, and extend. Um, then we'll go on and talk just briefly about WIPIA lesson planning. And then we're going to go in detail the site so you know all the parts that you are looking for on these lesson plans. And then uh, we're all going to share some examples from our program areas. And then uh, we want to give you time to explore and share. The goal is that when you leave today, that um, you will have some lesson plans in hand that you can use uh, tomorrow in your classroom. So here at OTAN, we have adopted a framework called Triple E. Could you type in the chat yes or no if you have ever heard of Triple E? And we definitely don't expect you to have heard of it. But go ahead and find your chat and type yes or no if you've ever heard of tr Triple E. Okay, so you're going to learn something new today. That's wonderful. A few of you have. There have been a lot of different frameworks for technology integration over the years. Um, but what we uh, have found is a lot of them focused on the technology or the teacher. And so this is what we really love about Triple E is because it it focuses on technology in the hands of students. And it also focuses on learning uh, objectives or outcomes first before technology. So it's called Triple E um, because each of the E stands for a certain aspect of the framework. First is engagement. So um, anytime we put a phone or any sort of technology in students' hands, we know that they're engaged. But this goes beyond that in that they are not passive users of the technology and uh, there's more of a focus on quality over quantity. So again, focusing on the learning goals. And another part of this is co-use. And what that means is that students are not using a software program in isolation, that they are working with their classmates or interacting through the technology with their classmates and the teacher. The second E is enhancement. So there are probably a lot of great tools that you use already that you've been using for years that do not include technology. So this added value part of the enhancement, it means that the technology does something better than a traditional tool could do. Also, in enhancement, the technology adds special scaffolds and supports for students, and that's um, a piece of equity to make sure you're reaching all students at their levels. And the third point for enhancement is that through the technology, we can differentiate the instruction and personalize for our students. The third E of the Triple E framework is extension. So that means that we are giving students authentic experiences with technology, with the hands-on things they do in our classes that will transfer over into their everyday life experiences. So we're connecting the learning 24 seven. So they're not just using a tool in our class and they'll never use those digital skills again, but they're, they're expanding out into their lives. And finally with extension, um, students are building their soft skills. So I'm sure you can imagine with technology, they're building problem solving and troubleshooting and negotiating skills, especially as they are working with their classmates in the co-use part. So that's a little overview of Triple E. So now we're gonna look at lesson planning. And um, I wanna just say that all the lessons that we have for you grab and go in include the Triple E framework along with a lesson plan. So does anybody know what WIPIA means? Or have you heard of WIPIA? <laughs> Type in the chat pod, yes or no. If you've heard of it. Okay, great. Yes, some people have and some people have not. So WIPIA is a, a is a, a model of lesson planning. And the first W is called warm up. So Debbie, if you hit the key. So when you do a warm up in your classroom, I know you know warm up. What what kinds of things do you do with a warm up? Any ideas of things that you do with a warm up? Picture prompt, great. 
writing the calendar, great. Discussion questions, great. Sometimes it's a review of maybe what you did yesterday just to warm them up. Go ahead and hit the um, ideas that I have here. So I put down icebreakers, image, discussions, and previous reviews. So you got them all, that's great. Okay, so the second one is called I, and, and that is introduction. And um, this is a lot of people don't know, well, what am I gonna say in the introduction? Originally, when I went to school way back in the 70s, they told me that you're supposed to tell the students the objective. But if I just say the objective in a low level ESL classroom, nobody understands me. So um, go ahead and hit introduction. And what we wanna do here is get the students excited. Let them understand why they're learning this. Why is it so important for them? So now we have gotten, uh, we have two Ps. And the first P is presentation and the second P is practice. And the reason why I put these like this is because in a lesson, you can have more than one presentation and more than one practice. A lot of times you think, okay, you're gonna do your presentation. And I like to do five minute short mini presentations and then uh, maybe a 10 minute practice and keep doing that until the students get through what I want them to learn. And you'll see that in our lesson plans that we're gonna share with you, quite often there's more than one presentation and more than one practice. And then we have the evaluation. So give me some ideas of how you do evaluation in the chat pod, if you don't mind. Rubric, good. Quiz, good. Any, any other ideas? We can go ahead, Debbie, and I statements and reflection. Great, Marcia, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Yeah, so an evaluation can be an informal assessment. It can be the students reflecting. It can be the students writing down what they learned. It can be a written assessment, such as a quiz. Um, and it could be an oral assessment, which C Cecilia mentioned about listening to them. So that can be an evaluation. So the last one, well, it's not the, actually the last one, but it is the last one in the WIPIA application model, is application. And this is a 24-7, just like Christy said with um, extension, application requires a student to be able to do something with what they've learned. So if you hit on application, Debbie, we'll see apply the activity to their own lives, very similar to extension in the triple E framework. So this is, okay, the last one is not in the model, but we've added it because we think it's really important. And this is reflection. That's why the R is in parentheses. So reflection is not just your students reflecting, but also you reflecting on the lesson and how you you did and how how you can either make it better or make it maybe it's perfect. But, you know, just reflecting on your lesson and your students also reflecting. So just so you know, this whole framework is on the next slide. And when you get the um PowerPoint, you'll have all the information about the WIPIA model. It doesn't include the R, but you'll know it's there. Thank you. Okay, we wanted to give you an idea of what one of the resources would look like. So this is it. We're going to look at Khan, and Khan goes with all the programs. Everyone can use it. And so first we start with a little brief description. Then there's a details page. And on the details page, it's where the links are. Also tells you what tech you might need to use. Now, the quick links that are at the top of this page, top lesson plan standards and documents, that's going to be a very fast way to not have to scan through the entire thing, but to hit the item that you're interested in doing. Um, we can then go to preparation, what you need to do before the lesson, teacher tips, things that we've tried and want you to know, um, more ways that you can use it, um, the program areas, the levels, and then we start the lesson plan. And you'll we're going through the same things that you just heard from Susan, where we have the warm up, the introduction, presentation, the practices, application. And notice that to the side on the right that we have the boxes where we've told you what um, part of the triple E that this particular activity does address. Then we have documents. Some of our resources have documents that you can download and actually use with your class. Um, we do our standards then and the tags. This one has a lot. But then finally, the Creative Commons license or any other licensing that we want to be able to cover with you so you know what you can do with them. Now we're going to look at some samples for each of the programs. So this one is Christy, I think. 
Oh, it's me. So oh. um, yeah, ESL. So we have four different lesson plans that we're just going to, I'm just going to share. I'm not going to take you there yet because we're going to do that later, but I'll go through what kinds they are. We have lesson plans from literacy all the way up through advanced ESL. Um, these were written by Christy and myself mostly. Um, and um, some other people have, uh, uh, have uh, joined us since we've been teaching our courses. So the the first one's going to be, we're going to talk about a personal logo. Logo, that's more intermediate advanced. And then spelling your name, which is more literacy level. Then fantastic places in the golden state, which is more intermediate level. And then the pre-beginning story bank. So if you want to go to the next slide. So Christy, this is yours. Yes. So this is a project I started doing with my advanced ESL students quite a few years ago, and I keep refining it, most recently adding some AI tools to it. Um, when I ask my students to reflect at the end of um, a term about their favorite assignments, they always say that this is one of their favorites. I usually do it early in a term, and I think it could be leveled down to intermediate ESL students and certainly ABE and ASE students could um, tackle this without problems. So for this project, students learn about logo types and design of logos through some listening and reading activities. Then they use a site called logos.net to research the history and origin as well as the de design choices of a logo for a company, product, sports team, rock group, uh, nonprofit organization. That site is very expansive with uh, logos of, for just about any logo you can think of. So they prepare a very short presentation for their um, classmates about what they learned. Next, they think about imagery and colors that symbolize who they are, their lives, such as their home countries, their jobs, their family. Uh, they think about symbolism for hobbies, interests, and goals. And so they do some you know, planning ahead of time. And then they use a technology tool such as the logo creator in Canva, which is free. Um, I've added an AI logo creator called Luca, which is also free. Um, they can use an AI image generator such as Crayon, Playground, or Dolly. Or um, they arrange images and shapes on a Google or PowerPoint slide and export that as a JPEG, as an image file. So then I get their um, logos, and then that is the basis of a paragraph they write to introduce themselves to me in the class, describing the personal logos they created, which later um, they have their script in their written form and they get feedback on that paragraph. And that later becomes the basis of an oral presentation with the visual aid being their logos. So it's rather um, a robust lesson, but it could be simplified and um, brought down to just creating logos and making, um, making presentations. So thank, thank you. you. So the next one is a, a literacy level activity and it was made by Cindy Wislowski and it's about spelling your name. It uh, uh, teaches the students how to spell their name and write their uh, first name, last name and street. It, it uses Google Forms and Google Slides to do this and students will post on a Jamboard. Um, it's very simple, but all the slides are there. And also there's a Learning Chocolate, which is another website that if you don't know is very nice for beginning level ESL. It is also in there because they have a lot of alphabetical activities in there. So all of those are linked for you. And there's a Google slide deck that you can download and you could starting your school year this year, this is a great time to actually teach this lesson. So I hope you look it up in the database. Um, another lesson plan that is on the Teaching with Technology um, database is um, a lesson called Fantastic Places in the Golden State. Of course, I see at least one of you is from out of state, so you would want to um, redo this for wherever you're teaching from. But in this lesson, for intermediate and above uh, ESL students as well as ABE or ASE students, what students do is discuss their favorite places, 
and they learn more about famous or interesting places in California. We live in such an amazing place. There's desert, there's ocean, all the biospheres. And, um, you know, I find with many of my students, they don't venture much out of their neighborhoods. So this is instead of me telling them, look where you can go. It won't cost you much to explore their, their learning and teaching each other. So they work on listening and note-taking to learn about and present uh, about, I'm, I'm sorry, about the grammar, which is present and past passive forms. Um, then they select a place in California to gather information about. So they're doing some research online. They then write a short script and present to the class what they found, applying the grammar that they have been working on. It is located, it was founded, it is known for. Again, this is one of my students' favorite assignments as well. And the next one is the pre-beginning story bank. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it is a collection of original stories from Minnesota Literacy. And it includes interactive sentence builders, phonics, word family, vocabulary, and typing practice activities for the lower level student. Um, in here, we in the lesson that we have developed for the uh, tech, teaching with technology, you have all the flashcards you need. You have the story with a Microsoft Immersive Reader, which will actually read the story to the students. And you have all the activities uh, phonics activities, links to all the Google Slides, so you can do all the particular activities. Now, this is just one story in the story bank. One of my goals is to get many more stories put together into the uh, Teaching with Technology database. But I think if you see how the one story is done, then you can use other stories there as well. I'm glad that I teach beginning ESL because there's a lot less talking that I have to do here. <laughs> Okay, let's look at the ABE samples. Um, all tech considered from NPR, CNN 10, and applied digital skills. Um, there's a lot that are wonderful experiences that you can find, but these are the three that I just wanted to highlight today. NPR's all tech considered. The reason I like it is it's up to date. And so many times our students come in telling us it's something that is not factually true. And so it's really nice to have a source of information that we can depend on. Every one of the stories has a listening option so that it will be read to them. And you can add it to a playlist. Playlists are nice because then the students can go back and listen again. Then to other ones, lessons that maybe were earlier in the, in the quarter or the semester. And if your internet is wonky, you can download it. The second one is CNN 10, and I had great fun with the students with this one. It's a 10-minute video of the things that are happening, but also other things like maybe panda bears. And so it's fun. The students get to listen. There can be discussions that are generated. They have to talk about things with each other. You can assign summarizing of one of the stories. Um, and the transcripts are available. Plus, um, CNN will offer you some discussion questions and quiz questions that you can include if you like. The last one that I wanted to include was Google's Applied Digital Skills. Our students come in with a whole lot of different levels of digital skills. Some of them can cut and paste. Some of them don't know how to move from one to another or how to download or how to do a presentation. So Google knew this. And so they created videos for all the skills. And then the thing that's really cool is they organize them so that the skills are organized by projects. There's over a hundred of them. Things like resume writing, budgeting, presenting about a topic, even online safety. And these things are all packaged so that there's the videos, there's the questions, and all of that is there already created for you. Let's turn it over now to Susan with High School Equivalency. Yes, I've picked two, um, GCF Learn Free and four tests, 2014 GED practice tests. Um, this first one, GCF Learn Tree. Uh, what I like about it is their uh, directions are very clear. There are images, there are video presentations. Uh, Debbie, can you go to the next? There we go. Um, this is just the math section, but there's pre-algebra topics, images and interactives, uh, tutorials. It's almost like having a math textbook. And this one I really like. Um, it's the GED T 
test. Um, there are 30 questions in each section. And um, they can decide which one. Your students can decide which section they want to test on. And what I like about it is if they miss the question and they get it wrong, um, it'll give an explanation of what they did wrong, which is really cool. And then at the very end, there is a second practice test. So after they study, then they can come back and take a second practice test. Um, this is for high school diploma. Um, I really like Future Me. It's about goal setting and documentation. Um, and then there's also 21 Things for Students, which is a digital literacy and citizenship. Uh, Future Me, students get an email account. Um, we talk about SMART goals and how to create a SMART goal. And they make their goals. And you can decide whether it's for um, next month or the end of the quarter, um, the end of the semester, the end of the year. Um, and they write to their future self. And then they get it back at the end of the quarter or semester. And they get to take a look. And it's kind of an incentive to keep them moving forward. And this is 21 things for students. Um, I think I talked about this before, but anyway, um, they use videos, uh, key vocabulary, tutorials, checklists, quizzes, certificates, and even badging to motivate students. And this is on navigation, image capture, browsers, online safety. And what's really important is um, email and email etiquette. Jesse, you're on. Thank you. So I'll be going over um, some CTE samples. And I actually, actually like 21 things um, for students also for, you know, for our career technical, the email etiquette is so important. Um, but I'll be going over um, Learn360, creating a job cover letter and quizzes. Um, so let's get started. So for Learn360, um, that is really an invaluable resource for CTE. It has over 200,000 um, media resources that are really from distinguished producers such as um, A&E, HBO, CNN, um, and many others. So these are really uh, videos that um, have to do with workforce and they're accessible um, off of any internet enabled device at any time from anywhere. So they're really easy for you to use in your classroom, to download, to embed, um, to provide links to your students. Um, it's really user friendly. Um, you know, this interface is really engaging students. Um, really like to use it, and it really um, ensures teachers and students can um, really discover a wealth of different videos, interactive activities. Um, some of the lessons also provide printables, audio content, so there's a lot of different resources that you can take from this website, um, and I specifically like it for career technical use. Our next one is um, creating a cover letter. So there's um, some lessons for TWT that is um, workforce related. So creating a cover letter is probably one of my favorite ones. Um, it goes through the writing process. Um, it goes over, um, you know, there's videos embedded and there's also where students are able to um, pair share with each other. Um, and the goal, you know, for creating a lesson plan, creating a resume or going through a job interview for for all of that sequence is really preparing our students for workforce, having them have a cover letter that's ready to go to apply for a job or a resume that's ready to go um, for them to be able to present that during an interview. And the last one that I'll be discussing today is quizzes. So quizzes, um, it's an online platform that allows teachers to create and share quizzes with students. It's designated to really make learning fun and engaging through, um, you know, different types of games. Teachers can create their custom quizzes or there's already some that are made. I think one of my favorite things to use this for um, in the medical is, you know, matching abbreviations or, um, you know, uh, 
matching brand and generic medication. So in health careers, I've used it a lot. Um, students are able to participate individually or as part of the group. You can embed links, um, you know, on different LMS formats. Um, and really, it's more um, gamified, so you're able to play games, um, so they're learning while it's fun. Um, there's leaderboards, um, so it's a really enjoyable experience and a great tool to really reinforce um, checking for understanding, right, that, that formative piece of information that we need from our um, class before we move forward. Now let's turn it over to adults with disabilities. Alicia? Yes, thank you. Yes, uh, I have picked two from our uh, website, Reading Skills for Today in Khan Academy. I know we've already discussed Khan Academy, but here, let's go with the reading skills for today. On this particular one, uh, you'll see the website and then it gives you a sliding menu. This particular one, I chose the reading one. I like this one because it has uh, provides a reading level for everybody. I like that it has a pre and a post question. It also provides you uh, supplemental documentation. It, it'll give you the story already written. And then there's different auditory levels. So different listening levels, slow, medium, and normal. It's uh, This particular one is very simple. The next one I'll show you. So this one, here's the writing. Now, my students would not be able to write, may not, most of them probably won't. So I am going to show you how you can adapt it for all. Um, there's the option one and option B. And one of them is you can summarize the story by writing if you would like. Another option I offer would be to draw or words that they heard. You could have time to share with each other or share with all. Following option B would be creative. This question was what kinds of clothes do you wear in the spring? Again, this lesson was on spring. So you might say, what are some things you could do in spring? What happens in the springtime? Again, making it available for all learners. You don't necessarily have to write, but they can show you something. That would be one way. Again, offering for all levels of learning. And to the next one. Thank you. And here's Khan Academy. Again, I'm focusing on a Adults with disabilities, as Debbie had mentioned, there is the website, all the menus. I just put that in there. She already went over that so well. So here's the next one. I chose this particular one. There are, as many have already talked about, one of them that I really liked was internet safety. And hmm. what's particular particular that I really like about Khan Academy is that it he is very welcoming. The speaker, he's very great. In this particular internet safety, he talks about the account safety, the passwords. His videos are less than five minutes and there are adults in the videos, which I really like. He has like, maybe I think I watched one who was, uh, he has a lot of CEOs in the videos and he's very easy to understand. He's very calm when you watch any of his videos. So I really particularly like um uh, this particular one. So th those are some how you could use for all learners. Hey, thank you. Susan, let's okay. turn it back to you to talk about finding activities. Yes, don't go there yet. All right. I do want to show you um, how to get there first. Um, we're going to go to the main OTAN website. And there are some tabs up the top. One of them is resources. And going down the list, probably about, actually probably near the bottom, is teaching with technology. That is what you're going to be looking for. And we can search by program area, um, CCR standards, or keyword. So let's go on, Debbie. And this is the program areas, um, ABE, ESL, ASE, um, high school, that was equivalency, and this is high school diploma, CTE, and adults with disabilities. 
And if you're looking up CCRs, um, we have the reading foundation skills, the reading, writing, speaking and listening, language, and mathematics. I'm going to um, go ahead and share my screen because I want to take you um, I want to take you to um, the actual website so you can see how to get in there. And I, yeah, this is the OTAN website. It is at OTAN.us. And remember, we talked about resources. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Here we go. And teaching with technology. So I've selected the resources tab. And down about the sixth one down is teaching with technology. So I'm going to select that. And there's a lot more there now. We have the program areas. They're also here on this one page. We have the CCR categories. And if you want to learn more about the teaching with technology um, database, you could go here. There is triple E framework. Um, and there is the lesson planning um, with, with, with PIA. So if you want to learn a little bit more about those, uh, you can do that. Um, I'm going to go to ESL. And we found that it is a little slow as it is searching because there are a lot of lesson plans. A mm, little slower than usual. <laughs> okay, here we go. And if you just search for ESL, um, you can also select what level. If you notice coming down here, you've got on the left-hand side, there is a navigation uh, panel. And you can select beginning letter C, beginning low, beginning high, intermediate low, intermediate high, advanced, or all levels, it's up to you. And we have been changing things over um, to, uh, to create these lesson plans and add um, Triple E to them, but we haven't gotten to all of them yet. We are working hard. <laughs> and so we are all trying to get as, as many as we can. If you notice here, ESL has 344 results. That's a lot. And some of them go across different programs. But what you're going to see on this page is five entries. So it tells a little bit about it, what program areas, uh, the levels. And here's the one I was talking about earlier. It's also on ESL. Um, this is a video. And ooh, civil rights leader. And I'm going to get down here. Random acts of kindness, upworthy video. And accessibility features for all our learners. That sounds exciting. But it, when you get down to the very bottom, look at how many pages there are. And each page has five resources on it. Um, the other thing is you could go Oh, I'm sorry. Don't mean to scroll like that, but I want to go. Um, I can put do put in a search, and you'll get fewer if you go for a particular search. I want something on fractions. And let's see what it comes up with. I don't know if you have fractions in ESL, though, but we'll see. But you can put in a keyword, whatever you're looking for. So don't feel like you have to go through all 344 to find what you're looking for. Um, that probably was not a good thing to put in. Oh, we have algebra to go. <laughs> um, and do we have anything else? Khan Academy. But anyway, I think you get the idea. So I'm going to turn it back over to, uh, oh, I didn't do the, 
Let me do one more. I'm going to do, let's go home. No, I want it here. It's always the uh, breadcrumb trail. Here is CCR categories. And I want something on, I guess, reading. And here I can choose 51 resources on CCR Anchor One. Um, so if you're going for a particular um, standard, um, you can select um, from here. What we want you to do is to go to OTAN.us, okay? And I want you to select the resources tab. I kind of went through and showed you how to do that. And then select teaching with technology. We want you to explore your area of interest and select at least one activity in your program area to share. So we're setting you loose.